hanging out with me today I figured we just have fun for a little bit there's no new sneak peeks or anything fun like that so darn <laughs> no it's fine but uh, paparazzi is definitely showing off their Timu special fashion fix set have you guys noticed that this this real unleash your inner musings with this fierce statement ooh ooh ah so um hey uh People who are not paparazzi consultants um, or people who are paparazzi consultants and are watching on the DL, I just want to point something out. Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to point out the obvious. So this is a fashion fix set that you can you can wait nine days. You can take your pre-orders and wait nine days to pick it up or you can go hit up Timu and get the earrings for $1.78. And you can get them in gold, or you can get them in silver, okay? You can get the earrings for $1.78 in gold or in silver, right there, okay? And then, say you want to get some ear cuffs to go with it. Well, you can get some really fancy schmancy rhinestone ear cuffs. You can get a whole bunch of different kinds, three pieces for $0.98, cents, the big fashion one for $1.99. Just type in golden ear cuffs if you want to get gold. And, and there's pearl ones and, you know, a whole bunch of different kinds, okay? They have the 99-cent rhinestone double one. They have the El Cheapos for 98 cents. They have this three-piece set, ooh, ooh, ah, for 89 cents. Oh, my gosh. What an amazing deal. And then you can get an ear crawler earring set with one ear cuff. Ah, no way. What a good deal. Okay. But then, you know, because we, we love paparazzi here, don't we? Yes, we just totally do. So paparazzi, magnificent musing sex. So you can get the one that looks exactly like the one paparazzi is going to sell you right here. Ooh, ooh, ah. Ugh. Why are you going through surgery again? I'm reading comments. That sucks. And then we have silver on silver right here. And then we have gold on gold. And guess what? These are $1.88 a piece. So again, if you want to buy from Paparazzi, by all means, you can buy this necklace from Paparazzi and pay $2.75 if you're a consultant. If you're not a consultant and you're a customer, you can spend $5. But if it was me, and, you know, I was going to buy a piece of costume jewelry. I'd be hitting up Timu and spending a dollar eighty-eight because today the price dropped 47 cents. And then say you want to get a, a silver layery, you know, bracelet. So here's a paparazzi bracelet there. And all you have to do is type in silver layery bracelet. Now they have actual real silver. Or they have, you know, a bunch of different types. But just type in layered silver simple bracelet. Here's a paparazzi bracelet right here. And then you'll just go through. There's a paparazzi bracelet right there. Here's another one for $1.26. It may not be as thick and as bodacious as the paparazzi fashion fix set. No, no. But at least that one's real silver. But those earrings look ridiculously huge. And here's the other thing. I would rather buy this one, the punk style one with the silver bead on it, that goes with the Fashion Fix set for $2.24, or an actual piece of silver that won't get discolored for $1.26. I don't know about you guys. So yeah. Paparazzi is trying to tell you that you can't get their jewelry anywhere. 
Apparently my left shoulder, I heard it again. Denise, are you not following your doctor's orders? I'm just I'm just throwing that out there because you're you're stubborn and I'm talking to you, Denise. You're stubborn and you think you can do it all and you're not listening to your doctor and then you give yourself more injury. Did you go back to work and do more than you were legally supposed to do according to your doctor's orders? Because that sounds like something I would do. No offense, but that is totally something I would do. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> So yeah, the paparazzi fashion fix set. Ooh, ah, uh, so cute, so fun. And then um, there was a starfish necklace that I saw. Leathers. Let me type it in. You remember the starfish necklace from earlier? Leather starfish necklace. They had it released on Saturday this week. And it was some sort of like leather star, this, this one right here, this ridiculous starfish necklace here that paparazzi released. <laughs> yeah, um, that necklace, wasn't it on their Facebook page? I think so. Let me scroll down. Stupid hearts with crystally rhinestones, stupid hearts with white. Yeah, this one right here. And I love how paparazzi says, oh, you could tie it in a bow. Honestly, the way Timu shows you how to wear it, I like the way Timu shows you how to wear it better. I mean, you, you move the silver bar, you tuck the starfish in, and you wear it kind of like a bolo tie scarf thing. The way Timu shows you how to wear it, I like better than the way paparazzi shows you how to wear it. And I'd rather have it in white than some sort of corally thing, but... Look, it's the exact same freaking necklace. It's just this one's got like ivory leather instead of peachy corally leather. I mean, isn't that crazy? Well, um, then you need to, uh, so I'm just reading Denise's comment. You need to get that documented with the Department of Workforce Services because your boss asked you to do something that uh, was on your restriction list and uh, your work uh, workman's comp needs to be paying for all of this and that guy should be on the hook for it. So I would be making a report with workman's comp that your boss told you to do something that was against your doctor's orders and that is how you hurt yourself again. And just make the report. If you haven't done that, do it. Gosh, it, you know, and that's the thing. If you, I'm sitting here with an ice pack on my, on my incisions. That's the thing. Um, I'm actually taking time off. I could technically go back to work, but I, I find myself getting really tired and really, really, like run down if I do anything for longer than like three to four hours. So I'm, I'm doing my best to just take it easy because this, this has been a tough, tough road to hoe. No, no joke. Okay. So yeah. And I'm grateful that David gives me that, that ability to do that. So anyway, all right. So, um, let's go into, all of this stuff. Now, you guys have been sharing stuff that um, I want to go over, but I'll pull it up in a second. But you guys have been sharing with me some of the really disgusting things that some of the paparazzi elites are doing these days. And yeah, so Timu Special beaded uh, bow earrings on a post. Um, in fact, one person was complaining that the post falls off in another group that I'm in, and they weren't happy with this. And then they show this awful ring. It's a skinny band ring, but they show this awful ring as a sneak peek. And then apparently Mandy Hench, um, for her Pink Diamond Encore, chose Rock Candy Range to debut an ombre of colors. Ooh. Mandy is an unstoppable force of nature. They're love-bombing Mandy right here, trailblazing through every hurdle with grace and appreciation. 
Okay. She is committed, driven, and it executes missions with a heart of fire. Mandy is an example to all of us that we can move mountains and look good while doing it. That's, that's completely a love bombing post. I find something in Timu, the paparazzi, and it's very funny. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, since she got injured on the job, it should be more than just family medical leave. She should be on disability and workman's comp for everything. So, yeah. I have FMLA too, but I'm not going to use it because, yeah, don't need to. So, there's that. Oof. So anyway, yes, um, I wanted to look this up too. Uh, rhinestone stretchy bracelet. Give me a second. Rhinestone stretchy bracelet. So look, we can get a whole bunch of different types of rhinestone stretchy bracelets. But here's rainbowy ones. Nine pieces in gold. Ooh, ooh, ah. I mean... Some of them are multi, but yeah, there's some rhinestone stretchy bracelets right there. Hi, Jennifer. We're doing good. How are you doing today, dear? And then we've got more rhinestone stretchy bracelets right here, but you could get oil slick rhinestone stretchy bracelets in five to ten piece sets here. And then a coil of rhinestones and a big thing of rhinestones. Bless you, honey. And then a one piece unisex rhinestone. So you can get multicolored, mixed colored, yellow, green, green, purple. You know, you can you can pick your colors. You know, ooh, ooh, ah. Right there. So cute. So fun. And they're stretchy. Wow. So cool. Wow. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, you guys shared with me a couple things. I'm going to pull it up real quick. So, give me a second to pull it up. So, how are you doing today, Miss Jennifer? All is well here. I'm just pulling up some stuff that you guys are sharing with me. And I find it absolutely appalling. So, you guys know that being in paparazzi, we are in a culture of... Uh, Kissing the elites behind ease, okay? And it happens. People kiss their elites behind. Um, I'm not going to put this up on the screen, but there was a certain elite that had her birthday the other day, and everybody treated this elite like the celebrity she Look thinks this. she is. This is all our warehouse. This is Andrea Kind of Hutchins looks like she's warehouse. organized it. This is all the paper that we use. For a second round of orders. So Jennifer, um, I wouldn't do that. Um, because I think the paparazzi tags are not valuable at all. Why would you buy from Timu and put it in a paparazzi tag? That doesn't make any sense to me. I personally would rather buy from Timu and resell it to my customers for what I deem I can sell it for. Than buying from paparazzi for two dollars and seventy five cents plus tax on the full five dollar value with Timu, you don't have to do that. You just have to collect the, the appropriate amount of taxes and pass it on to your state. But I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't risk even associating with paparazzi. That's just me. And if if anyone does that. Do so at your own peril. I wouldn't condone that. I wouldn't recommend you do that. I think that's kind of stupid. But you can show that, hey, look, I found this piece on Timu, but I, I, I can sell it to you for this. Oh, good. I'm glad you're selling your inventory more quickly. It, you know, and, and your sets are killer. So I'm glad that you're selling your inventory quicker. That's great. But yeah, I would not, I would not do that if I were a pop, pop a person. If they were a papa person and they did that and they got caught, you do, you, Jennifer, do you realize how quick people would turn on you? Oh, they would turn on you like that, like that. They would be like, um, her PV shows 
that she's not ordering, but she's got the new fashion fix pieces. Where is she getting the fashion fix pieces? They would turn on you in so, so quick. Yeah, so I wouldn't do it. If I was a consultant, I wouldn't do it. If I was a former consultant, I wouldn't do it. And I know former consultants that buy from wholesalers and sell for themselves. And guess what? They, they have taken the paparazzi tags off of their inventory and put their business tag on. Um, and they sell it as costume jewelry and they sell it for what they deem. But most people who are former consultants take the paparazzi tags off because they don't want to be associated with the company. And as I have shown over the last four years on this channel, you can get the same stuff from other places. So yeah, there's that. I was just curious because it's such a rabid culture. I don't know anything about how the ordering. Okay, what are your questions? Because I'm here to answer them. So, so in, in five minutes, Jennifer, uh, the paparazzi back office where consultants start clearing their schedules to go online to see what the new releases are for the day. And then the countdown clock starts. Okay. So they get into their back office and you'll see a little countdown clock and you can heart all the new pieces that come out. Oh my gosh. Modern day Madonna is back in new releases. That's not new. I own that. So anyway, you know, squirrel there. <clears throat> so they go in their back office and they add everything to their wish list. So they heart it. And then as soon as the clock hits zero, they go into their wish list and add to cart. And then they check out with a frenzy without thinking about it, thinking, yes, I scored. That's, that's what I call the fear of missing out frenzy. Okay. So, and paparazzi on their Facebook page, gives you sneak peeks about what they're going to release on that day. So exciting. I didn't know if anyone could tell if they bought it or not. Oh, they can tell. So um, Jennifer, if you're an active consultant and you're selling jewelry, but you you're not a star consultant, meaning you haven't reached 50 PV, meaning you haven't purchased 25 pieces for that month, and that's the reason they want you to be on Fashion Fix is Fashion Fix is a guaranteed keep yourself active uh, subscription service where you get the Fashion Fix pieces plus five exclusive pieces um, in your Fashion Fix subscription box every month. It's, it's a game changer. It'll change your business. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it, you'll end up with inventory you can't sell. So anyway... Um, it's just a way because on the 20th of every month, they bill all the consultants for their fashion fix sets and then they ship them out. And here's another piece that's not new that they're bringing out again, Seaside Sophistication. I had that when I was a consultant. That was one of those new releases when I was a consultant. So yeah, I imagine that Papa Corporate would be pretty heavy handed about enforcing their copyright. Oh, they are, Rosie. In fact, one of my very first videos on this channel um, was them asking me to take their logo off of my blog. And I was like, okay, I'll take your fucking logo, and pardon my French, I'll take your fucking logo off of my blog. Can you stop emailing me? That would be great. I kind of regret that choice now, but because... I have so many amazing uh, former consultants that still get the emails. Guess what? I still get the emails every every day. So, oh, so they rank by selling, but they really just buy it and can't sell. Yes, Jennifer. I was one of those people that bought a bunch every single day, Monday through Friday. I bought more than I could ever reasonably sell. And I ended up in $84,000 in debt. And uh, it, took, it took me nine months to sell all the inventory that I loaded up on and how I sold it all. Um, I discounted everything on my website. Then somebody in my upline reported me to compliance because I was selling for less than $5. 
And then I got an email from paparazzi, paparazzi saying I could never come back because I was selling for less than $5. And then because the FTC, even though that's, you know, I'm finding more about the FTC, uh, the FTC, once you purchase a product, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. They can't dictate what you do with this uh, once you are no longer affiliated with them. So I put the FTC case on the top of my website saying that I can sell my inventory for whatever price I deem necessary and they can't tell me that I can't. And I quit in March of 2020. In fact, it was a week ago, uh, four years ago in a week that I quit being a paparazzi consultant. And it was right as the country was shutting down. And then, ooh, boom, boom. Um, they had a whole bunch of new consultants uh, join the company. And because they were having extreme shipping delays, people were buying inventory off of me to sell uh, because they couldn't get it fast enough from paparazzi corporate. That's how I was lucky enough to get all of my inventory sold out from underneath me um, and recoup most of what I had paid. I still lost money, um, but I was able to pay off my credit card debt and I was able to buy myself the, uh, the schmuddle, blah, 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 this thing on my desk. If I say her name, she'll start talking, but I bought this and that was, it sits on my desk now and reminds me that I'm never doing that again. So. Yeah, well, they, so Jennifer, that's another thing. They paid $2.75 plus tax on that $5 value. So they're paying $2.75, but in my case, it was $3.55 is what I ended up paying for each piece once paparazzi charged me the full tax value. So, yeah. You pay the full $5 value on the $2.75 purchase. But again, why would you pay $2.75 for a pair of twisty ear cuffs when you can get a pair of cute little twisty ear cuffs on Timu? So gold ear, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna type it up here again. Gold twisty ear cuff. So here's some with a bunch of things, but here's a three piece set and one's a twisty one. One's a rhinestone, 98 cents for three pieces. Ooh, ooh, ah. Here's a two piece set. One's gold twisty, one has a pearl. Again, why would I spend $2.75 when I can get the same thing on Timu for less than a dollar? And it's because they have to sell it for $2.75 so they can pay their upline elites for recruiting all these people to the company. The people that bought the $20 party permit pass, a good portion of them realized that they were being pressured to buy inventory when they just signed up to get the discount for themselves. And um, I just want to share something with you guys. And I'm, and I'm grateful that I'm like constantly saying the same message over and over and over again. And I keep repeating myself because I get new viewers on this channel every single day. So I get new eyes on my content every single day. And because I keep repeating the message, and I know you guys are my, my regular viewers and my friends, I love you guys, but I'm pretty sure you guys are sick and tired of me repeating the same message every single day. Okay, so... New releases are about to drop. We have six minutes. So we have a snake chain that you can get on Timu, a heart with a white frame. Oh, now we have the, the urban acoustics and some rhinestone carabiner thing, key layer. Oh my goodness. Look at all this crap. And the reason I pound home the same message all the time is because eventually... It, it resonates with somebody and then they, oh my gosh, another Taylor Kirby piece to hit, hit black diamond encore. It's lion legend. Ooh, ooh, ah. And then we have some yellow charmy thing. Are you guys seeing this stuff? Isn't this bad? All right. So we're going to get all these pieces added to the cart. 
And then we'll take bets on what we think will be the first thing to sell out. Because it's going to be fun to see what sells out today. Starlit Shimmer style. I think the bows will be the first thing to go. Because I don't know why. But look, that's a matching set with the, the necklace that came out. Oh my gosh. A Life of the Party bring back piece. Really? Shell out red. Those aren't new. Denise, don't you still have those? I think I saw those on one of your posts the other day. And then Timu bracelets all over the place. And then business brunch. There's nothing businessy or brunchy about that. It's just atrocious. Oh my gosh, it's a set of rhinestones. Wow. And then more sneak peeks and ugliness with Misty Kirby. All right, so there's 18 new releases today. So now I'm going to make the screen smaller. So um, I'm guessing the first pieces that are going to sell out are going to be the bows. The bows and then maybe the heart necklace and heart earrings and maybe the lion thing. And maybe the key layer and the magnificent musings and maybe the rhinestone pieces. Okay. Oh, yeah. Urban Acoustics is old. I had them before. I know. I have one in my jewelry box, Debbie. I think you sent me one of them. I think you sent me the one in, like, New Penny Copper. One of you guys sent me one in New Penny Copper. I actually wore it a couple days ago, and then it broke. Hi, Aradel. So much of this. Was that a hot dog ring? It looks like a hot dog, but no. It's not a hot dog ring. <laughs> They are all, but not many make you buy so much inventory. It reminds me of Lula Rose business plan. Exactly. It's so much like Lula Rose business plan. It's not even funny. Oh, and most of those earrings are from 2019. Not all people leave with inventory. That's making them sick, though. No, that is true. And, you know, Jennifer, it, it really depends on your immune system. See, I, I, I was already immune compromised and had health issues. It, it. My health issues did not stem from all the paparazzi jewelry I had in my house. It didn't help. My copper levels dipped while I was interacting with this crap every single day. But I've got that back up to normal ranges. Took four years, but I'm back in normal. Why are we not new? I can sell those cuff bracelets. No one can sell those cuff bracelets, Debbie. It's because you can get them on Timu for cheap. They had a St. Patty's Day ring. Too late. Womp womp. Where was the St. Patty's Day ring? Did I miss it? Oh, that was the Fashion Fix set. The March Fashion Fix sets are now available for all consultants. So, <clears throat> so yeah, let's see. I'm thinking the glitter takes it is not going to sell. Tangible tranquility is ugly, and it looks like baby puke or baby poopy diaper on a pendant. That's just my that's just my opinion. I'm just throwing that out there. Whimsical wishes. It's in Misty Kirby's favorite color. It's yellow, so people will probably buy it because Misty Kirby loves yellow. But yeah, I think the Starlit Shimmer Stellar Showcase, those will probably sell out. I'm guessing the stupid bows will sell out. Um, the Retrospect Blue, that's a Black Diamond Encore piece, I believe. Oh my gosh, hi, Stephanie! <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's just, yeah, it's all bad. It's all bad. And, oh, I should get up. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do Kevin. Do, 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 do. Where's Kevin's song? I gotta find it. Where are you, Kevin? So, here we go, you guys. We have 30 seconds to go. Because I put this song on because it reminds me of the insanity that I felt. People are now getting ready with their credit card number and their CVV code. And they're getting ready to check out. And uh, let's see. The bows will be gone and the hearts will be gone. And the fire symbol will start the minute one of those two pieces go. But I'm thinking... Chick Connection, Serendipitous Strands. We're live! Here we go. Let's take bets, you guys. I bet yours is nicer too, Rosie. 
Okay, so here. Oh yeah, it snowed up where you are, huh, Stephanie? We have a lot of wind out here. And Ellie is so weird. She will not go out when it's raining. We literally have to drag her butt outside to go to the bathroom. She will not do it. All right, nothing is sold out yet that I can see. Can you guys see if anything's sold out? The fire symbol's going, but I haven't seen a shift. All right, we had our first shift. What was it? Not the bows. Bows are still there. The hearts are still there. Wow. Things I thought wouldn't sell out are selling out. Wow. We're down to three pieces gone. So the bows and the hearts are still there. I was totally wrong. Wow. So this necklace is still there, but the, the bracelet's gone. Wow. Okay, now the ear, the, ugh, the necklace is gone. Oh, I know. I'll look. I'll look after the live. I'm in another Facebook account right now. Yes, I admit, I have another Facebook account that somebody gave me access to so I can see the paparazzi Facebook page. Wow, I was totally wrong. I was totally wrong. I thought for sure that the heart pieces would be gone. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just blown away. I mean, the baby puke piece and the key layer and the magnificent musings, I mean, you can buy those and stack them. <laughs> but it's like, wow, I am so wrong. I am so, so wrong. But two minutes, four pieces gone and sold out. So four pieces gone. I'm gonna, oh, now we're down to 13 pieces. The bows are still there, but the choker's gone now. All right, so we have now five pieces. So five pieces and they had, four, and you know, back in the day they used to buy, oh, now we're down to 12. So the heart necklace is gone, but the heart earrings are still there. Do they do trainings to, you react to on Facebook? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> um, I've done reactions uh, on some of the trainings, but yeah. All right. So say... So they had 18 pieces, six sold out. I'm I'm just gonna be conservative here for a second. Say they buy 2,500 or 25,000 of each piece and they've sold out, so times six. So 150,000 pieces in, in three minutes at $2.75 a piece. That's in three minutes. That doesn't include what hasn't sold out and that people have bought, but in three minutes, if, if I'm being conservative, but from what Denise has told me, it's more like 50,000 pieces of each piece times uh, six, and then multiply that by 275 in three minutes. That's the kind of money they're bringing in in three minutes. And you wonder why multi-level marketing companies are a trillion dollar industry. So, but Ellie also hates the rain. Ellie will not go outside in the rain. She is such a, she's such a little twit. They have trainings on YouTube and Facebook, and I have done reactions to trainings on Facebook and YouTube both. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good about doing that. All right, so let's go back to this. <clears throat> Meet Andrea Hutchinson. Andrea has been with paparazzi since 2012. She's originally from Peru. She came, from, she came to the United States in 2007 without knowing the English language. She learned by reading books and watching movies with captions at the bottom. She was a college student when she was invited to a home party. She immediately saw an opportunity with paparazzi accessories. She loves teaching and helping others, and she has given 
heart and she is contagious excitement. She received Christ as her personal savior in 2009. What does that have to do with selling jewelry, Andrea? I ask. She loves God and will never be ashamed to share that with you. Well, that's good, but I don't think God and business should mix. Just like God and politics shouldn't mix. She's bold and passionate about her systems and time management. Her husband, Danny, helps her behind the scenes, and he has managed many warehouses around the world. He was a general manager until Andrea retired him in 2017. He left his full-time job and joined her and helped her. So he didn't technically retire. He just quit working outside of the home to work for his wife. I mean, let's, ugh, I hate this language, retiring the husbands. I mean, that's something that Lularo told you to do too. He left his full-time job and joined her and helped her. They are an amazing couple to be around. He is also a pilot. Well, that's great. Why aren't you working for an airline? They need pilots. So they are looking forward to continue to help with missions, travel around the United States and help their team members. Tap into success, LLC is the name of their company. They are a jet setter team. They are they lead an amazing team of United Fashionistas. I was on her team. Over 50,000 team members from Puerto Rico, Alaska, and all the United States. They are also a Crown Club 50 and Life of the Party Black Diamond. Andrea Hutchinson is also a certified coach with Love, Serve, and Grown Movement by Bob Helig. And he... He has been his mentor. She has been his mentor since 2018. I don't know that they, I think that needs to be proofread. So. By the way, she started in paparazzi accessories when the kit cost 2000 Yeah, I know. They are not retired if they're still working. Yeah, I know. So it's like, oh, <laughs> there's so much not right with this house just but, send yeah, them look there. at this warehouse look at this this is all our warehouse it kind of looks like shoes organizers this is all the paper that we use for a second round of orders today warehouse warehouse she's not on her bed right that's because she's man so again i i need to ask um in what world does having a warehouse full of product mean you're a successful salesperson? Well, look at how successful it looks on Look how successful it looks on camera? Is that what you said? I mean, yeah, that's apparently how they treat it. I mean, if, if this was someone trying to convince me to join them in their MLM, and I saw two full rooms full of shelves, full of boxes, full of inventory, I'd be like, you're full of yourself, you fool. I am not going to be joining you because clearly you can't sell the product, so why would I want to join you? And this is the thing. I was a fool because I fell for it and had my own little warehouse of jewelry. So yeah, this is... <laughs> I get frustrated because it's like she was my upline. She was the one telling all of us that we we needed to have rooms and rooms of jewelry and inventory to make ourselves successful. She was the one that told us the more inventory we had, the more shoppers we had. She was the one that told us that we should start buying five of each piece during new releases every Monday through Friday and then in month of March every Monday through Saturday. She was the one that encouraged me to inventory load because she herself inventory loads. Alice, yeah. just saying them there. So that just mm, bugs me just a little bit. Anyway, yes, you can get the same fashion fix set on Timu. All right, now here's another one. This, this is Taylor Kirby. Let's, let's re, okay, so he posted this apparently on his mental health Monday, okay? And he, he loves his mental health Mondays. All right. Firm believer in watching the littlest of actions in people's lives will tell you everything you need to know about them. Like if someone wear Crocs, there's a 99% chance they don't shower on a regular basis. What? What? Did you pull that statistic out of your ass? Because here's the thing. Um, people who wear cowboy boots and ropers, 
most likely walk through shit. 99% of the people who wear ropers, which is a form of cowboy boots, or cowboy boots, walk through shit. So, I'm using your, your, whatever you want to call it, and I've seen you in pictures of cowboy boots, so guess what? I'm guessing you're one of those people that walks through shit, Taylor Kirby. But yeah, um... And then Kimberly Garcia, who is just as egregious, um, I'm just going to put this up here. Or it's possible it's their own form of birth control. Kimberly Garcia, that's my beard. Yes, your beard is birth control. Hey, Taylor, I wear Crocs because, because I have diabetic neuropathy. So bad in my feet and legs. They are comfortable for me. Please don't judge a book by its cover. I have heard, I've heard the same said for men with beards. You know. It's like, you know, people wear Crocs because they're comfortable. I've even seen uh, other bling bosses wear croc Crocs. But you making this post, you're trying to get your engagement up by saying something gross and saying something that causes people to uh, comment. And then here's somebody, sir, I feel attacked and I shower every day. He doesn't seem to realize that people look up to him and why I don't know, but people look up to him. And this is, this is a little bit abusive in my humble opinion. It's gross too. So I only wear v very cheap old Crocs outside in the yard. No other place. All right. All right. Now leave my Crocs alone. I may show big as freshly showered and sporting my bling Crocs now. Crocs are shower shoes in sports mode. They are river shoes. As far as I'm concerned, who the fuck cares? But he had to post this to get a rise out of people. And it definitely helped his engagement, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It definitely got his engagement up there because he was saying something that was mean and getting, you know, his engagement up. But, yeah, it's Mental Health Monday, and he's personally attacking people for for being kind of a pig. So there's that. So let's go to this one. Oh boy, it's going down tomorrow. The bling boss got new stuff. At least she's smart and covers up her address right there. But she got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes of inventory plus her fashion fix subscription. So there's that. But here's another post from our bling boss friend. <clears throat> this last month, I slowed down on recruitment as I felt I was not, wasn't was giving all of my new people the attention that they needed and deserved for onboarding. Plus, life has been doing what it, it does. Apparently, she had to go and um, go to court this week um, to testify or something. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but Shay was a family member of hers that passed away. Apparently, the person who uh, participated in that passing away was sentenced for 30 years, which is sad. And life does what it does. Yeah, life does what it does with me. But yeah. Um, but I'm grateful that the two young ladies that chose me to be their mentor this weekend. So she got two new recruits. And at least she's giving them a shout out, but still. But still, I mean, people continue to join this company. All right, so here's another one. This was a new release the other day, too. This was a paparazzi new release the other day. And look, here it is on Timu for $1.98. I love that you guys see all these things and and share them. But yeah, paparazzi's new releases, if you, if you want to find them, just go look. So, but this, this post had me rolling on the floor laughing. So I got to share this with you <laughs> because it's so funny. Out shopping and I see a very similar set to what I was wearing yesterday. My paparazzi set is $10. This set was $99 with no earrings. My niece Ava said, that's a whole kit with 35 pieces in it. My baby even knows what's better. Okay, so here's the set she's talking about. 
okay? The plastic chain with the plastic chain, okay? Now, this one is actual metal with actual enamel paint. It's not plastic on plastic. So yeah, $59.50, okay, yeah. But it's real metal and real enamel paint. And um, it actually looks better quality to me because it's not O-rings, it's actual two rings holding the chains together. And these chains have little separations in them that they could break off, okay? But tell me again how these two are even comparable? Because I don't, I don't see them being even close to the same thing. <laughs> and I was like, delusion is calling. Can you please, can you please, uh, can you please go meet with some people? For delusion, I mean, it just, it blew my mind. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. Timu, paparazzi. Timu, paparazzi. So, yeah, um... I'm going to keep pointing out all these paparazzi ear cuffs that you can easily get on Timu for less. I mean, as we go through, now there's 12 pieces still available, you know, but yeah. Oh, Amanda, you, you hit the nail on the head with that comment. Two new people to treat like dirt and call suckers and losers. It's just, you know, and one's plastic and one's like actual metal. And it just, it blew my mind on the whole thing. The whole thing was just so dumb. Okay, so anyway, let's pull up a training video from 2020. Or should we do one? I mean, things have changed in paparazzi. So let's do... Do we want to see Crystal or somebody else? Let's do this person. This one's called Paparazzi Roulette. It's called Paparazzi Roulette. Hello, Let's see what I they're talking about. Meg. I am going to be doing a training today on a super fun new game called Paparazzi Roulette. It is very similar to Deal or No Deal, um, but for some reason... My customers love it, and I sell so much more um, than any other game I've ever played. So, so here's a question. She's talking about paparazzi roulette. How many of us played like Blingo or Trivia or something else when we were going live to sell our jewelry? I did Blingo. Hi, Sam. So she's going to talk about a game that she plays with her customers that has helped her sales go up. And she's going to teach you guys about this new game. Let's talk about it. I'm going to give you a rundown. Hello, Michaela of Paparazzi Roulette. Let me go ahead and get this shared to my team groups and chats and all that jazz. If you're watching and you see that little live up in the corner there, give me a hashtag live. If you're I'm watching speed and there's it up nothing, so we can get to the actual hashtag recap. Training. Hello, Miss Crystal. All right. Um, so I'll eventually share this, but it doesn't look like I can share. It's okay. So paparazzi roulette is just like deal or no deal. But for some reason, um, here we go. I've been loving them. I've been watching them all. So, uh, I will need some volunteers at the end. So hopefully some people hop off Michaela. If there's any way you can share this into our team chat, please do so. So paparazzi roulette it is very similar. Let's listen before we judge, Debbie, but it could be, but it's a game. I don't know how she convinces people to play this game, but let's listen and then we'll form our judgments. <laughs> to deal or no deal. It is very fun and it gets all of my customers super excited and stoked. And I always have lots of great pieces. She doesn't so, have a major of wall of debt. How you're going to prep is you're going to take the pieces that you want to show. I have my show board behind me and I put them on my board. I then take all of my number cards and I preload them. 
and then I take those numbers and I put them in Wheel of Names. So if you don't know what Wheel of Names is, go ahead and check it out. It's on Google. You just type in wheelofnames.com. So for example, I'm going to show you. Hello, Miss Jessica. How many of you used Wheel of Names? I did. Yeah, it was it was quite fun to do Wheel of Names. Yeah. This is my earring wheel. So I do Hello Allie. I do all separate wheels for each category um, because my customers like to choose what they're going to spin for. So um, I have E for earrings. I'll have B for bracelets. Hello Lisa. Hmm. R for rings. And for, S for short necklaces, L for long necklaces. So um, you can do one big and wheel. And U for you urbans. Want. I have tried it both ways with my customers, and they prefer having separate wheels. So an earring wheel, a ring wheel, a bracelet wheel, all that. So after you've done that, you want to make sure you have essentially your no deal box. This is when they say they want to roulette it. Yes, I'm loving the trainings too, Amanda. So I have everything, this is all Christmas themed because we haven't played in a while, but I have everything pre-packaged. These are just mystery pieces that I have in a box. I prepped these way ahead of time um, with items that my customers haven't seen. Hello, Brit. Okay, so first of all, she has a box of inventory wrapped in cute little packages that she hasn't sold that she's going to give away? Or is this a roulette piece? I'm I'm confused, but so far I'm just like, why do you have stuff left over from Christmas? Well, Me, I hello, don't know. Crystal. Um, lots of all kinds of different things. You can do like, I know our Starlet Shimmer is getting discontinued, but you could do like five Starlet Shimmer, short necklaces, long necklaces, whatever. Um, but hello, Adam. These are just mystery pieces in a box. I call it my roulette box. Essentially, it's your no deal box. So to prep, let me let me look at my notes because I have some notes here, guys. Hello, Miss Ashley. So you're going to pick out your jewelry, put it on your board. I always have my jewelry behind me. I know not a lot of people do. It's OK. My brain is um, not working right now either. I have it behind either. me because that is free I'm trying to follow advertising. This. I cannot tell you how many times I've said everything's five dollars and someone says, what's that piece right there? Oh, thank you, Whitney. Oh, thank you. I have a new uh, hair curling technique I tried. Okay, here's the thing. She's supposed to be training right now, and I'm getting irked that she's reading and responding to the comments. It's like, can you just do your training and stop talking to people about how you curled your hair? <laughs> my hair does not curl well, so I was super excited that it worked. I don't Anyways, care. <laughs> um, I cannot tell you how many times somebody says, what's that right there? And I say, oh, that's a $25 piece, but I can show you if you like it, and I'll show them. They'll say sold, and I'm like, shh. Free advertising. Anyways, so I load my pieces. I have my free advertising behind me. I load my numbers. These are just my little number cards. Free right advertising. Okay. I take these numbers and I put them. Okay, Um, I'm just going to say this. It's not free. It's not free advertising just because it's behind you. It's inventory that you purchased and then it's on a pegboard that you paid for, on peg hooks that you paid for, so none of what's going on behind you is actually free. Just saying. In my wheel. I also have a pen and paper. Okay, so you can see we play this tonight. And when my customers oh. ask to spin, I just put them on my list in order. And when their turn is done, I just cross them off. Okay. So <clears throat> your jewelry, your number cards, your roulette box, your pen and paper, um, and your computer or some type of device in front of you for your wheel of names. Now, the rule is it is $5 to spin. You do not have to spin to claim. What I mean by that is if somebody says that they don't like a piece and they want to roulette, they want a mystery piece, the piece that they spun goes back on the board and it is up for grabs. So you do not have to spin, um, but if you do spin, you are committing to one $5 piece. It's just like deal or no deal, but your pieces are up in front of you um, for view. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how this is allowed in paparazzi land because um, you could play games. And this is my understanding. I don't know if rules have changed in the last four years or not, but 
you could do giveaways for likes and shares. And if somebody won, if somebody won something, um, it was usually a mystery hostess item. My disclaimer was if you won a prize and you didn't make a purchase, you still had to pay shipping and handling on the prize in order to get it. But making someone pay $5 to guarantee a sale, to spin a wheel, and then they may or may not like the piece, yeah, this is gambling. When I ask who wants to play, um, my customers will type spin in the comments. Um, if they want a mystery piece, they just type spin. If they want a specific piece, they type spin earrings or spin short necklace or spin long necklace. You get the idea. Um, when it's this, their turn, I ask, okay, Christine, it's your turn. Are you here? And she'll say, I'm here. First of all, that's getting you an extra comment, which improves your algorithm. When I say, okay, Christine, it's your turn. Oh, you wanted earrings. I go to my earring wheel and I spin. Wow, and it's paparazzi, really fun are to, like, you paying attention? This is gambling, paparazzi. Hi, Jessica. I don't know who this is. Oh, looks like 145E. She spun 145E. Then I go to my board and I pick up 145. And I say, okay, Christine, there's two, two ways this can go. You can say, love it or roulette it. And I'm gonna say this is number 145. These are posts. And this is my little inventory number. I use a silver Sharpie instead of like Oh look, tags. haven't they been releasing these this year? Those up. aren't new. A black Sharpie, scribble it out. So <clears throat> these are number 145. Do you love them or do you want to roulette them? And she's gonna look at them and I'm gonna say, here's your earrings. I'm gonna show you with the macro lens. Them. Here's your macro lens. Look at that. So gorgeous, beautiful. Look at all those that scratches beautiful. in those rhinestones. Super cute. Sometimes I pull out my ear. This is my ear, my handy dandy ear. <laughs> my customers love this thing. I know, love them, right? And it's surprising the customer I showed this to actually did not want them. I was like, what? Yeah, so, because they're hideous. I show them on my ear. And I say, oh and my And that gosh, ear thing is weird. Love it or roulette it. I would roulette and those things so say, fast. Love it, right? Love it. My customers think it's hilarious because it's actually man's ear. <laughs> the, I know, the ear, right? But it's a really good way to show um, jackets without putting them in your ear. So, love it. Or roulette it and she says love it and I go yes I knew you were gonna say that it's gonna go in your bin and guess what I have extras number 145 and I'll say sold 145 sold 145 so on and so forth and I'll say oh I, that's all I had I only had three extras there it goes Christine got it it's in her bin um, and Roz got it and you know you know how it Wow this this is fear of missing out manipulation gameplay in my opinion those i'm, I'm now, blown away if she says roulette it she says she doesn't want them they're too big i'll say oh my gosh i am so shocked that you did not want this pair of earrings so i'm gonna say okay it's going back on the board and i hate that oh my gosh you don't want these hideous pieces of crap well by all means what can i sell you because i have other hideous pieces of shit in my inventory but th this the shaming Okay, I'm just gonna point out something. She is shaming her customers for not wanting that pair of earrings. We've seen this before with Crystal Lee Roberts Mitchell. She says, oh my gosh, you guys are crazy for not wanting these. You guys, you don't want these? I hate the shame factor that these Team Unstoppables and Slay Sisters and Sparkle Shine and all, they, they all instill shame and it's, it's terrible. Okay, you shouldn't shame your customers into buying something that they don't really want. I don't know about you, but I've never walked into a Walmart and picked up a sweater, looked at it and go, hmm, I don't think so. I don't like that. And have a Walmart worker come up to me and say, well, you don't like that sweater. What's wrong with you? No, that just doesn't happen. Maybe it happens in Prada, but it doesn't happen in most, most places. And I'm sorry, but paparazzi jewelry, your stuff has gotten uglier and uglier. Who wants them? The first three people to say sold 145 gets them. I go put them on the board and I take out her roulette piece and say, okay, this is going to go in your bin. And it goes in her bin. 
So that is kind of the gist of it. I asked for a roll call. Um, it gets an F. And the roulette piece could be a mystery hostess item that nobody wanted and nobody would care for. And I'm sorry, I would rather... Mm. Extra comment in there, which improves your algorithm going live. Who cares about algorithms? algorithms. Um, you guys so know I clearly don't. Improves algorithm, customer entertainment, customer engagement. Um, if they love it or roulette it, either way, their turn is over. You can do this with one big wheel of all of your numbers. More comments, the better. Exactly. Or you can do separate wheels. So I did it for a while with just one big wheel. And my customers were like, well, I really don't like earrings or I don't have my ears pierced. So we tried it today with separate wheels and they... If your customers don't have their ears pierced, what about all those wonderful clip-on earrings that paparazzi has? Loved it. They got to ch ch kind of... I mean, how many times did you guys... I never ordered clip-on earrings because I didn't have customers who wanted clip-on earrings. But how many times did you get clip-on earrings as your mystery hostess item in your box? And you're like, fuck. They can choose what piece they wanted. If they knew I had chokers on the board, they had to spin to get that choker or wait till somebody else spun so that they could claim it too. So that is it. That's the training. I was thinking if you guys are up for it, would you like to try it? We can do like a trial run. Um, if you would like to go ahead and comment spin. And if you want to pick a category, go ahead and include your category. Are they going to have to pay you five bucks to, kind to of see play? What it's going to be like. Um, so I'm going to put this back on my board and take a drink of water because I am nervous as all heck. And my mouth is dry. <laughs> Again, this just makes me sad. It is a lot of fun. So if you'd like to try, um, if somebody just wants to comment spin, we can do it real quick. Um, Caitlin wants to go. Caitlin, do you want a mystery piece or would you like to pick a category? I love how your name is spelled, by the way. Oh, I'm sure you do. Oh, I'm Okay, so she's going to play with people watching this training, but that's a little gross. Okay, so the yellow charmy piece didn't sell out. The heart earring Timu specials didn't sell out. Starlet Shimmer, the hot dog ring. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to empty out the cart for today because, yeah, all those wonderful, fabulous new releases didn't sell out. Okay, so... <sighs> I don't know what to say, you guys, except you shouldn't be playing gambling games to drive sales. But, you know, when desperation hits, you will do anything to get your sales up, which we have seen consultants who have um, been struggling with paparazzi for quite some time. I mean... I'm just going to put the, the trust the po process post up here again. Give me a second to pull it up. Because it still, it still saddens me to read this post. So give me a second to pull it up. There was a lady who is in the group. It could be a man too. I don't know because it was an anonymous, non, I can't say the word. You guys know what I'm trying to say. Here's a post where they did not want to be known who they were. Because I can't talk or think of words today. So, let me make this big. Okay. Again. Hi, y'all. This is my first time posting anonymously anywhere. And I want to share things that are on my heart about my paparazzi bin business and ask for advice, feedback, and know if anyone else feels this way. I love the company. Okay, I'm gonna break this down because I've been thinking about this for a couple of days. When I left paparazzi, uh, when I was on the verge, when you guys saw me checking out in my very early, early on videos, I still said I love the company because that's what I was conditioned to do. I was conditioned to say, I love the company, I love the founders, and it was very culty to me. It was very much like being a kid going to Mormon church on Fast Sunday. I would get up and bear my testimony. I know the church is true, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, is I didn't love the company. 
I didn't love what the company did to me. And I didn't love the founders. I had never met them. So how could I love somebody I'd never met? And I did like the jewelry, but I didn't love the jewelry. So I see, I see a testimony meeting in the beginning of this post. I love the company and the founders and I love the jewelry. But the question I have to the anonymous poster is this, do you really? Or are you just saying that because that's what you were conditioned to do? I am coming up on eight years in the business. Eight years. Eight. Ladies who are still here watching with me right now, how many of you have been in the business? How, how many years were you in the business? I was in it for 14 months. That's 2,920 days, okay? Um, 2,920 days. It's also 96 months, okay? Eight years, eight years. I work seven days a week in some capacity on my business. 96 months. 96 months, 2,970 days. She works seven days a week. In past years, I have been very successful. In the last three, my sales have tapered off and I'm struggling to sell 10 pieces a month now. What has happened in the last three years? LuLaRoe documentary came out. Crack the Crown started three years ago. Paparazzi being sued started three years ago. Paparazzi suing started three years ago. Paparazzi removing the lead nickel free claims from their website started three years ago. Paparazzi changed their whole business structure to target 18 to 25 year olds. That started two years ago. Two years ago is when they said we're going to start going after the younger demographic. That started two years ago. Okay, so that that is the changes that have been taking place, okay? In past years, I've been very successful. The last three years, sales have tapered off, and I'm struggling to sell 10 pieces a month now. 10 pieces, $22.50 is what her profit is. And she's working seven days a week to get those 10 pieces sold. It's heartbreaking. Three years with a full-time job and a family. Kimberly, three years. I was really... I was selling really good, didn't recruit. I honestly should have stayed and just sold the jewelry. You didn't recruit? Why would you stay, Kimberly? I honestly should have stayed and just sold the jewelry. Why why would you stay when when that makes me I'm curious, why would you want to stay and continue to enrich somebody up above you? I mean, you can still sell jewelry without being a paparazzi consultant. You can still take the things that you learned from paparazzi and sell jewelry without doing paparazzi. But the thing is, is, and I'm just going to point this out, and, and this is something else. She's struggling to sell 10 pieces a month now, probably because her, her customers are jewelried out, okay? How many of us have more jewelry that we will ever wear in our lifetimes, sitting in packages, in our closet, in bags and boxes and bins. How many of us have more jewelry than we will ever reasonably wear sitting around our house? Me. Yeah, I do. Okay. There comes a time when you just stop buying because you have more than you can ever use. You have more than you could ever need. So you stop purchasing. And that and and you can't blame your own customers for wanting to take a break from purchasing. Okay? So so if people stop buying from paparazzi, if people stop buying from you, it's not a personal thing. It's just because their priorities have changed, okay? And just because you're struggling to sell 10 pieces a month, that's normal, okay? 
you you're you're in a business where you don't really truly have a consumable item. You're selling something that doesn't have an expiration date, okay? It's not like something that they can use up and then they need to replenish. Jewelry jewelry is not a replenishable item, okay? This channel got you canceled. Yes, it did. Sorry about that, Beck. I was really good at selling. Didn't recruit. I always say I love the founders. For me, that's very personal because for me to love someone, you have to develop a friendship and knowing those people. That's the, yeah, that's the thing. And I don't know if this person actually knows the founders or if she's just saying that. I was a consultant for five years. The only clip on earring findings I ever bought was to make earrings for a private customer. And they were sterling silver. Nice. Me, me, I have so much. Yeah, we all have a lot of jewelry. And they probably found Timu. Well, Debbie, Cher and I love Timu. <laughs> I was good at selling. I sell jewelry now, but for some reason, a lot of people have stopped talking to me as soon as I quit. Kimberly, that happens to all former consultants. You are no different. When you leave a cult, when you leave a cult-like atmosphere, the people who you thought were your friends stop talking to you. Why is that? Because the transactional relationship ended, okay? It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you at all. You stopped enriching them. So they didn't need to maintain a relationship with you because you were no longer transactional to them. My relationships with people that I met in the multi-level marketing company, the people who recruited me, that transactional relationship ended when I quit paparazzi. And guess what? So did our friendship. The people that I thought were my friends have not spoken to me in over four years. That has nothing to do with you, Kimberly. That's a them problem, not a you problem. And all I can say is shame on those people who you thought were your friends that stopped talking to you. But you need to remember this. You were a transaction to them. You were money to them. And the minute you left and stopped help fill their bank accounts with money through your purchases, even though you were great at selling it. Yeah. And Kimberly, your customers stopped talking to you because they were probably indoctrinated into the cult. Or, or, and I'm just putting it out there, or those customers were poached by other paparazzi consultants, they went on to your live shows that you had still on your website and they reached out to all of those customers that used to buy from you and they talked them in to shopping with them because that is something else that has happened, okay? So your customers may have been poached by an active paparazzi consultant. You're not alone there, Kimberly, and I know how isolating it can feel, and I know how demoralizing it feels, because that is the culture paparazzi encourages. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the fucked up culture of paparazzi. It has nothing to do with you, okay? <laughs> right, Stephanie? And Stephanie goes live and I and I pop on anonymously and watch Stephanie go live. Stephanie, do yourself a favor. Take your join my team thing down because I've seen you live on TikTok and I haven't reported you on TikTok because I know you're no longer an active consultant, but take that thing down. <laughs> that way you don't get reported by others. So um, that's one thing. Take your join my team thing down because you're not in paparazzi and you don't need anyone to join your team. So remove that little thing from your background and just sell your jewelry. Okay. Okay, Kimberly, it happened to me, but it didn't stop me because I did understand they were only a transactional friend, not real. Exactly. My friend from 1983 stopped talking to me after I was canned. That's really depressing and I feel bad about that, Beck. But again, transactional relationships, what can you do? You can sell your things and your own roles and your own control and customers come back if they see you selling your own things. That is true. They will eventually come back to you 
when they stopped drinking, um, and I hate saying this because it's very Jonestown, but it, it when they stop feeding into the frenzy, feeding into the lies, you keep showing what you've got. You keep going live. You st- doing what paparazzi tells you to do. You got to stay consistent. You got to go live. You got to sell stuff. You've got to support others. But the thing is, is you need to realize that you, are, you, all of us, we, we were in a cutthroat industry, a cutthroat culture, a cult-like culture. And because we were in that culture, when we quit, and, and I know this happened because it happened to me. The people who were buying from me were reached out to by people who were still selling in my team, United Fashionistas. They they got reached out to by other active consultants saying, hey, you used to shop with Emily. Why don't you shop with me now? I kid you not, that happened. And it does happen. And it happens all the time. You're not the only one that that's happened to. And I'm sorry that your friends and your shoppers stop shopping with you. But just remember... If it's a real friendship, they'll reach back out to you. If it was transactional, they weren't real friends anyway. Okay? I've seen my former customers on current... Exactly! Because they were probably poached to go over there, Kimberly. So, the real customers stay with you. If they're addicted to paparazzi cult, that's another thing. Believe me, Kimberly, just keep it up. Yes. And, And we've all been there. We've all been so down in the dumps and depressed by all of this and feeling like we're absolute losers and failures and suckers and what the hell did we do wrong? Here's the thing. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay? None of us did. I mean, Denise and I both, you know, you're going through, you're going through what I went through, um, probably, gosh, it's probably September. After I quit, where all the people that I thought were my friends completely just cut me off. And that's when I started doing more and more with my channel and they completely cut me off. Okay. And it, it's, it's heartbreaking, but you got to remember, just like with this lady, her sales have tapered off and she's struggling to sell 10 pieces a month now. And I believe Debbie just said, a lot of my customers say they have so much jewelry, they were just shopping to hang out with me because they can't wear it all. Exactly. We were promoting a toxic environment. We were promoting an addictive thing. We were promoting addictive behavior. Through the fear of missing out, we were, we were encouraging people to buy things like we were encouraged to buy things. That we had no business buying because we couldn't even sell it. But yet we had the fear of missing out. We felt like if we didn't have these new hot items, we wouldn't have the, the customers. It's a, it's a very bad culture. And we were in that culture. And I see the lady in this post, you know, she sells by so many different methods and she's tried everything. And even her rural community of 6,500 people will not support her in any way. She has spent thousands of dollars at a salon. Local businesses donated, supported so many local charities and events. She can't even get these people to share a a Facebook post for her, much less spend $5 with her. She's stuck and she's heartbroken. We were all stuck and heartbroken. And here's the thing is, when I started with the multi-level marketing company, Can I tell you, and I know this now because my friends told me this, can I tell you how many of my friends and family members started blocking me and unfollowing me and not letting me, they would unfollow me so they wouldn't see my posts. So they wouldn't see what I was up to because they didn't want to be associated with my multi-level marketing business. So I was unfollowed, unfriended, and blocked. I was isolated before I was isolated. It reminds me of some notes that I took the other day, so let me. Because I've been reading the book Brainwashed. I don't know if you guys have ever, in fact, I'll pull it up real quick. All right. I'm reading this book right now because I've been doing research on echo chambers, okay? And so I started reading this book. Here are some of my notes from my reading the other day. 
echo chambers. We are isolated from others and we are surrounded by like-minded individuals. Um, you know, that's something that paparazzi loves to say. They love to say that we're coachable, that we're like-minded individuals. Um, and we surround ourselves and we network when we go to convention, Empower Me Pink, Paparazzi Dorks, all of those things. Okay. And one thing that paparazzi does to keep you indoctrinated and ba brainwashed is constant Zoom meetings or calls. So if, if you're in a team that has constant Zoom meetings and calls and trainings, it's to keep you indoctrinated. Okay, and Team Unstoppables and Team United Fashionistas and Team Slay Sisters and all the other things, I know for a fact they have a lot of trainings. The one thing I do, do know is all of these team groups that uh, you guys used to be a part of, they've all turned private. Okay, your former uplines got sick and tired of me getting copies of their training videos that they turned all of their team pages and team groups private. And it was to keep me and others like me from reacting to their content. That's why they turned everything private. So for those of you who may still be in those private team groups, if you know how to download the trainings, by all means, send them to me. I can always use new content to react to. There's my email. You can upload them to my Google Drive associated with that email. <coughs> Here's the other thing that they would have you do, because I've been watching old trainings. They would give you books to read, read literature, do challenges. So uh, what's one of the, the books that you get if you're a paparazzi consultant? how to influence people, you know, seven effective habits of how to influence and win over people. I think that's one of the books they have you read when you become an elite. Um, let me pull up the, the elite book. Where did the elite book go? Hold on a second. So, yeah, when you become an elite, I believe one of the things you get when you become a paparazzi elite I just got to find this stupid thing. Ranks and recognition. Uh, da, da, da. I mean, before, I mean, this one's, this one's the really, really old book. This is the 2017. This is my original book. This party planner versus this party planner. I mean, I have like five party planners. So... Let me get to the ranks and recognition for the most recent. So when you become an executive producer, so when you first become elite, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That's the book they give you. Okay. That's the book they give you. And then one thing that I've noticed um, the elites talking about is they do like their own little book club and they have all these books little book clubs and they've been reading like Eric Worre books and Ray Higdon books and Dave Ramsey books and and you know they're talking about what they learn from these entrepreneurial mindset books okay all right so and then they do challenges like the Cinderella challenge and then one thing that paparazzi does is repetitive messaging and I thought about that and I know I do the same thing I do repetitive messaging, but my repetitive messaging is saying it's okay. You were in a commercial cult. You were you were led to believe that you were going to own your own business and start your own thing when you were nothing but lied to. Okay? You were nothing but lied to. And you were led to believe that you could be successful at that. But just like Cindy, when she finally learned the truth, you know, you won't make any money unless you recruit a team. That's how multi-level marketing companies get you. You won't make any money unless you recruit for them. So you can keep them as a multi-billion dollar business. Okay. 
Exactly, Sam. They reinforce things. And then if, um, the other thing I read is if you fall out of line, you're, you're met with threats. You're met with fear and anxiety that you'll will be canceled or suspended. And with that fear and anxiety, you are under a lot of stress. And then your stress hormones kick in. And then they turn into like POW techniques and they put you under duress. And that's something that I thought was really funny. When you guys go to convention and I'm going to, I'm going to pull up the dare to dream. Uh, let's look at the dare to dream convention. Uh, what honey? Let's look at the agenda. So, um, one thing they do during convention is, um, it's, it's a technique to help get their message in. So they, they have you do early check-in, elite check-in, then they have their photo shoot and their workshops. And then on Monday the 29th, they have the showcases, the Hall of Fame, the photo shoot, the workshops, the Dare to Dream kickoff with the first concert. And then they have general session and showrooms and Hall of Fame and more workshops and more workshops and more general sessions. What's the point of convention? It gives you lack of sleep. You don't get to take care of yourself in the right way. You don't get to, you know, actually enjoy where you're at. You're at convention, so you're supposed to be going to all of these things. Okay? And then if you do take time out to be a tourist in a city you've probably never been to, then they shame you for, like, wanting to go on the Ferris wheel or the roller coaster across the street. How dare you? But during convention, you're gaslighted. Um, you're fed a bunch of BS and then they dehumanize the naysayers telling you not to quit and not to listen. I mean, that was one of the, the things they did in last year's convention. They told you not to listen to the naysayers, not to listen to those people that had quit. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Okay. And then... As paparazzi consultants, you know, you are an object to them. You serve just one purpose for them. You're not human. And what does Misty say at the beginning of every sneak peeks or hidden gems? I'll wait for you guys to put that in the comments while I catch up on reading comments. But what does Misty say at the beginning of every little thing she does? They shame me of wanting to watch TV and other things. Yes, they do. Mike, yes, they do. Exactly. Oh, yeah. If you're a leader of a team, you're supposed to do all this stuff to motivate your team and shame them for not being there. So what's one thing Misty Kirby says at the beginning of every sneak peeks, hidden gems, or talk that she gives at Empowering Pink or Convention? Hey, paparazzi. Hey, paparazzi. And that's how she de dehumanizes you. That is how paparazzi corporate dehumanizes their objects, their consultants. They don't say, hey, so-and-so, hey, so-and-so. It's, hey, paparazzi. Because you're not good enough to have a name, but yet you're supposed to love the founders and love everything they do for them. But they dehumanize you by saying, hey, paparazzi. A little fucked up. What, honey? <laughs> oh, I'm reading a book. I'm just telling what I'm thinking. But yeah, uh, victims are dehumanized. And that's a way of dehumanization. By not giving them a name. By just, you know. That's one thing. And do you guys remember when the Crack the Crown group first started? And I believe it was Patty Shevlin had a prayer meeting. Do you guys remember that? I remember this. Uh, 
they were they were having a prayer meeting to exercise the demons and the devils and not today satan and they were casting out the devil that was another thing people who were starting to use their voice through the crack the crown movement um were were being naysayers were speaking out against their their company against paparazzi and so patty shevlin had a prayer group where they were smiting satan casting out the devils telling satan that he didn't have any power over them that's another thing of brainwashing and control so when you lose control of a situation you dehumanize those in the human in the you know the people you've lost control over you dehumanize them by giving them references to satan and that was something I read in this book, and I thought it was funny. Because Patty Shevin lost control over people that were apparently in her downline. And they dehumanized those people by referring to them as Satan. You know, Sam, I that's in the book, too. In fact, that's one of my notes, is I'm surprised they don't give people a number like they did during uh, Prisoners of War, during the war. Exactly. Well, you do get a number, Sam. It's called a consultant ID. You're not a you're not a person. You're a number. I was consultant two five eight four one one. Two five eight four one one. I'm amazed it's not tattooed on my arm. Cause I know of some consultants who've done that, and it's just like, wh wh where are you? Okay. So, being in paparazzi is like being in a cult. They normalize the toxic culture, and they do it through the desire of harming others to lift themselves up. Kim, I just want to say that you left the cult, and because you left that toxic culture, the desire to harm you for leaving was more important to them than anything. Okay? The other thing is, and I was, you know, and I've almost finished this book, but the other thing is, is when you are normalizing a toxic culture, you totally cover yourself. And I was like, is that why Misty always wears oversized clothing? You know, totally covering ourselves in oversized clothing, covering our hair, covering our face with our hair, being a mystery, but acting like you're an authority figure. And I was like, who do we never, ever see? Who, who in paparazzi do we never see? You know, it's like, and it made me question it's like who's the actual authority figure at paparazzi who is it that we never ever see i mean we see the dorks we see trent and summer we see misty but we hardly ever see channy so i wonder who's the one actually driving all of this that makes me wonder and and then you guys know that the, there's been a whole bunch of stuff coming out because of the Jody, Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie stuff. But it's like, is Channy the Jody Hildebrandt paparazzi? I mean, that's, that was like, I wonder, because we never see her. <laughs> but that's just my, you know, my like, oh. So, 412510, me, I just own it. Uh, yeah, I just own 258411 too. I know they did, Sam. I've been to some of those camps. I've seen those camps in person. I've been to I've been there. Been to Poland. Been to Sobibor. You know, it's 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 gross. Yeah. Well, we all replaced our name with a number. So anyway, yeah, the book Brainwashed is a pretty good book so if you haven't read it um it's it's a very interesting read um i would recommend you read it 
Uh, there's several books on brainwashing, but that's the one I read recently. And it's, it's really interesting how some of the stuff that I saw happening to me when I was in paparazzi are things they talk about in this book. And paparazzi, I feel, in my opinion, brainwashes people. You know, and this poor lady, she's at the point where she wants to pack everything away and just quit. Here's, here's my thing. I hope she does. I hope she does pack everything in a, away and quit. Because this is what paparazzi says. Step outside of your comfort zone and enhance your confidence and try a new style. What spring trend would you like to follow? Misty. Uh, none of them. Dream when you are awake. Motivational Monday. Each Friday, we post a recap of who gets what. Tell Jeff and I what food you like to eat. But it's like, yeah. Brainwashing 101. And now that I look at all of this through a different lens, it's just, it's more and more interesting to me. The more I look at this stuff through a different lens, the more I'm like, I was so indoctrinated. It's not even funny. So anyway. All right, you guys, I'm going to head out for the day. I need to go and take care of nature and put my ice pack back in the fridge. So anyway, I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here and watching The Fear of Missing Out with me today. Kim, you're not alone. Stop feeling defeated. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but we've all been there. And, you know. Just like with everything, there's a market for things at certain times of the year and there's a market for things at other times of the year. But just like with everything, clothing and jewelry is not something that people... I mean, I've been wearing this shirt now for six years. I, I have not bought new clothes and I'm on Timu timeout. So if, if people aren't buying, it's because they have other priorities. It's also tax season. People have to pay their taxes. In April and they know how much they owe so they got to start saving money for it so don't don't take it personally if people aren't shopping you know people have other priorities you know just remember it's not you and never take it personally that's the worst thing you could do all right you guys Remember to take care of each other, be support to one another, be real, not perfect. Sam, I hope you start feeling better soon, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. All right, shout out to my members and financial supporters. It's greatly appreciated. If you have not checked, make sure your subscribe button is still subscribed because YouTube's doing that thing again, and I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.